All right, here is a um, predicate logic proof. This proof sort of focuses on the what little trickiness there is in predicate logic proofs will get demonstrated by this particular example. Now, it's not very tricky because predicate logic proofs are quite easy usually. All right, uh, I'm not going to write the rules here. If you're not comfortable yet with the predicate logic proof rules, you probably should open the packet and have the rules in front of you. But what I am going to write on the side is the six-step method that we should use for every predicate logic proof. What is the first step of that method? Well, the first step is actually to look at the conclusion and see if it's quantified. Is our conclusion quantified? Obviously it's not. What would it mean to be quantified? Well, it'd either have an upside down capital A or backwards capital E. It doesn't have that and therefore we are not going to assume the opposite. The first, what is the first step? The first step says assume opposite of conclusion if quantified. Conclusion is not quantified, so we're not going to do it. That's, that's all there is to it. All right. Steps two through six are, are even simpler. Step two is to do double negation if necessary. Do we have any situations where we need to do double negation? Clearly on line one, we do. We have two dashes in front of our quantifier, and what we want to do is get those out of the way. Therefore, we're going to write for all x, fx, arrow, gx, and that's going to be one double negation. Remember, the point of the method here is really to get rid of all the quantifiers. That's what we're trying to do. Now, we worked on line one, so let's check it off. That's part of the method is to check off every quantified line as you work on it, and then once you've got them all checked off, you'll know that you're done with the predicate part of the proof. Okay, so we did double negation. The next three steps, three, four, and five, are really the important part of the method. It's to use our three new rules in the correct order. Here is the correct order. Quantifier exchange, existential out, universal out. Where does quantifier exchange apply? Well, quantifier exchange applies when you have a single dash in front of a connective, just like we have on line two. And the goal, obviously, is to get the dash out of the way. When you do quantifier exchange, this is the only part of the formula you're working on, the quantifier and the dash. So this is going to become, there is an x dash. Now the rest of the formula comes down as exactly as it was written up above. And so let me write, there is an x dash, dash, now the parentheses, dash, gx, ampersand, fx. And the justification for that will be 2QE. That sure looks sloppy, but that is exactly what we need to have there. All right. Do we have any more quantifier exchanges that we need to do? No. That was the only place where we had a single dash in front of a quantifier. Now we're up to existential out. Do we have any existentials we need to do? Clearly we do here on line four. Existential is the main connective. So we're going to rewrite this formula, drop the quantifier, and then rewrite the rest of it, except that we're going to replace the variable x with a name. This is going to be 4EO. What name should we choose? Can we choose A? No, we cannot choose A. Why can we not choose A? Well, what's the restriction on our choice of names? When you do existential out, you must choose a new name. And by a new name, we mean something that doesn't appear in the proof at all. You've got to look at your conclusion. Since we have A in our conclusion, we may not choose A up here. Therefore, what name shall we choose? How about B? Sounds good to me. All right. This is such an easy thing to mess up on a test, not to, to fail to look at your conclusion or, or, or just to forget that you need a new name. So do remember that. Uh, step six. 
No more existentials to work on. We're up to universal out. We do have one universal on line three. Let's work on it. We're going to drop the quantifier. We're going to replace the variable with a name. What name should we choose? This will be 3UO. Well, we can choose absolutely any name that we want when we do a proof. In practice, what name should we choose? We should choose a name that already exists someplace in our proof. Therefore, we should choose between A and B. Which one do we want? Could we do this? Can we put A and B? No, you may not do that. Do not do that. That would be a really bad thing to do. And now I've messed that up, so now let me go get... <laughs> I wonder if I'll be able to fix this. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll just rewrite the formula. Um, F something or other, arrow G something or other. You have to choose either A and put it in both places or B and put it in both places. How do you decide which one you should use? Well, as a rule of thumb, it's better to choose a name from up above than it is from down below, although that doesn't always work. Sometimes you really just have to think about what you've got. You've got two dashes in front of these parentheses here, and if, when we drop these off, we're going to get dash GB ampersand FB. If we had FB, we'll be able to do the arrow out and then get a contradiction. The truth is most of our proofs are not going to be that difficult, so they're just not going to, this isn't going to be that big of an issue. Um, but, let's see, at this point we have checked off every formula that had a quantifier in it, and so we are done with the predicate part of the proof. Now we're up to step six, which is to go back to the old rules. Okay, And the rest of this proof is really pretty easy. The predicate part of the proof is definitely easy, and let's just run through the rest of this. Line 5, we can now do this double negation. We get dash GB ampersand FB justification would be 5 double negation. And then now we have an ampersand we can break up, so we get dash GB and we'll get FB. It's 7 ampersand out, done twice. And now, let's see, we've got an arrow out that we could do with lines 6 and 9. If we do that arrow out, we will get GB, 6, 9, arrow out. And then do you see what we need to do at this point? Well, let's check off everything that we worked on. We've already checked off 2, 4, and 3. But let's see, we've also worked with 5 and 7. What do you notice? On lines 8 and 10, we have a contradiction here, right? we should utilize our contradiction shortcut. Whenever you get to a contradiction, we know that you can prove anything. Because as we saw with truth tables, from a contradiction, anything follows. So we just assume the opposite of our conclusion. Provisional assumption for dash out. And now we take in, we put in that contradiction, GB ampersand dash GB, and we are done. Uh, this is B810 ampersand in, and the conclusion will be 11 through 12, dash out. Such excitement. All right, good luck with the studying.